Hello beautiful and magnificent beings. Welcome to Energy Awakening. My name is Nietzsche and it is my intention to help you feel great and live your best life. In this video, we're going to be doing a Reiki session to help you better connect with your guides. And I'm also going to share a couple tips that I also use that have made a huge difference for me as well. So let's go ahead and begin with invocation so we can bring in everyone, all the divine support that's going to help us in the session, welcoming the presence of all that is, Reiki masters, ascended master, spirit and animal guides, angelic realm support, and benevolent beings of the highest truth and compassion. We invite and welcome this energy and influence that serves our most empowered and aligned selves. And so it is. So when I was younger, I had a couple misconstrued conceptions about working with guides. And I cannot remember why I thought this or believed this, but the first one was, I felt like I shouldn't ask unless it was absolutely necessary. Like it was a bother or something. Like I shouldn't be asking, I should be doing it on my own. But that was just my issue. And the second was understanding or that I felt sometimes I would receive guidance or information and sometimes I felt like I was being ignored and not receiving anything, but this was not true. I was basically expecting it in a certain way and if I didn't receive it that way, I thought I wasn't getting any attention. But like I said, that is the furthest from the truth. Neither one of these are true, and that was just my issue. But something I have been doing for the last year or longer, every morning before I go into meditation, there's certain things I like to say. And one of them is I am allowing myself to be more connected to my guides and creator, and I am allowing myself to be more aware of the divine messages, synchronicities, symbols, that are coming through. And almost immediately, I noticed a major shift and change when I started doing this. And it got me really excited. So, like I said, I've been doing it for about a year or longer. I start every morning with this before meditation. And sometimes I say it throughout the day just to kind of check in and also give gratitude. And the third thing I've discovered while guidance comes in, we're more likely to receive it when we ask. Um, like, this earth is free will, so I feel like, I mean, nothing is ever shoved or put upon us. But when you ask, you will receive, sometimes immediately, sometimes it might be a day or a week. But just being open to what comes in, because you always receive information. And I know this might sound strange or crazy, but I literally several times a day speak to them. It's just a good habit to get into because I feel like a lot of times the answers are very obvious and easy for us to say, okay, I got that. Just knowing in your heart without a doubt. But a lot of times because of our programming, our backgrounds, that we are very fearful or skeptical and we get a message we're like, well, is that a message? I'm not sure. We might doubt. And because of that fear, we're taught not to trust our intuition or ourselves or anything. So we might receive some incredible insight, but because of our fear to completely trust ourselves or our guides, that we dismiss it. So working on our personal power, our self-love, is also going to help play a huge and major role in the connection. And the last tip I have, to start practicing this on a daily basis, instead of waiting until we're so stressed out and something severe is going on and we have that fear attached and the clinging, um, See it as a game, something fun and light. Just play around with this each day. Connect, talk to them, think to them telepathically. And just ask simple questions. 
And if there's a specific topic, I mean, it can be anything. Just ask for assistance or guidance that you're not constricting or uptight or fear attachment and see it as a fun game because the lighter you are, the less attached you'll be to the outcome and you're not clinging and grabbing because that cuts you off. Same with manifesting. So again, just see it as a fun game. Think of a question, something you want to ask or you would like to know about. And always give gratitude. This is definitely very helpful throughout the day. I always thank them for the information that I'm always receiving all day long. And just live with that gratitude. Feel that in your heart. Let that energy raise you up to higher vibrations. And each day that you do this, it gets easier and easier. So when the more difficult times and situations arrive, you're not as attached. You've gotten accustomed to this connection. You begin to trust and let go and everything will just flow so much easier. The constant flow, abundance, the messages, the synchronicities will come in even faster. So that's my last bit of advice. Let's go ahead and move into the stones we're going to be using today. So I've chosen some that deal with the higher chakras and realms to help us better connect and clear out anything that might be blocking. And so starting with three main ones, amethyst, lepidolite, And also Azurite, which you've seen me use this before. This tiny little piece. I'm going to give it to you and have you just place it on your third eye and it'll stick there. If you would like, you don't have to. And the next stone is something completely new that I'm absolutely obsessed with. And the person I bought it from told me it comes from Madagascar and that is a, it's a recently discovered stone, but I can't seem to nail down a timeline. So if you happen to know, I'm really curious, is it a year, is it years, weeks? I mean, how new? What is recently discovered? That's something different to each person. But this is a cherry blossom agate or Sakura agate. As you can see, the colors are very indicative of cherry blossoms. It's beautiful. And I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but if you look closely, the inclusions, you can see it gives it a very 3D look. But it's just so beautiful and stunning. And I find myself touching it and holding it all day long. It's always in front of me where I can see it on my desk. This has never happened to me before with a stone crystal. So we're using this to encourage self-growth, self-love. It also sends positive energy to the person using it or wearing it. It's also very powerful as far as uh, metaphysical stones as well. It's very transformative. So you're probably going to see me using this a lot more than some of my other stones. And the last one, as I was saying, personal power, or yes, I forgot, sorry. And also using this bringing in self-love because this brings in uh, a lot of help with our personal power as well. So bringing in the citrine, not only with manifestations and working with our guides, but bringing in for our personal power, strengthening that solar plexus chakra, giving us the courage, the strength, and the knowing that we are all powerful beings. A big power sign because you are powerful. And 
also the last two that I am going to be using, or actually I want to give you. Are these selenite sticks. And I'm just going to have you hold one in each hand. So make yourself as comfortable as possible as I bring in Reiki through time and space, all dimensions, realities, and timelines, past, present, and future, for our greatest health and benefit and the well-being of all. Just allowing me to be a powerful conductor and transmitter of this sacred and ancient energy as I begin to send a stream of divine healing energy, shifting consciousness, feeling spiritual elevation, just allowing this energy to nourish and satiate the mind and the body as I send a steady stream flowing to you. Reiki is repleting the body and the aura, opening you up, streaming in all this higher consciousness energy, balancing every thought, letting go of any fear-based thoughts, emotions that are not true or holding you back. You are now allowing yourself to be more open to connect with your guides and source energy. And you can say to yourself or out loud, I am allowing myself to be more connected to source and my guides. I am allowing myself to easily receive all the guidance I require. And I am allowing myself to be more aware of what I am receiving. And I'm receiving this knowing with confidence of that it is a divine message just for me. I am allowing myself to tap more into my power, the truth of who I am and what I'm capable of. And I do this with ease, grace, and gratitude. I am allowing myself to be more connected to my guides than I have ever been. I am open and allowing myself to receive with love and gratitude. And so to close out our session, I pulled a card from this Angel Oracle deck. Actually, two cards came out. I meant to pull one card, but two cards jumped out. So the first message, the first card is holy love. And I see this as reminding us uh, not only are we loved by the highest divine presence, but we also hold this holy love, this high vibrational love within us. We are powerful beings. 
And the second card is courage and bravery, reminding us that when we tap into this love, love is the highest vibration and frequency of any energy, and we are powerful and courageous, and we can be brave, even more so when we tap into this, because we trust ourselves, we trust the universe, we feel this power within us, and know that it is safe to trust our guides. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. I hope you were able to enjoy the video and receive all the benefits of the work. Thank you for your continued love and support. I truly and deeply appreciate you so very much. And until my next video, there's so much love for you here. Highest blessings and infinite gratitude. Satnam.